Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Tony and in today's video I want to show you how simple it is to pair a Grandstream access point as a slave to a master AP. I'm also going to show you how to save yourself some time and frustration by avoiding a very common mistake. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing and be sure to hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. So one of the things I like about Grandstream is they give you plenty of options for managing your devices. You can use the GWN Manager, GWN.Cloud, you can use the GWN 7000 router, and you can also use controllers built into the access points themselves. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm signed into a GWN 7630, which we set up as a master in a previous video. Let me switch to this secondary view. You can see here I have the GWN 7630. This is going to be the master device, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 7615, and we're going to pair the 7615 as a slave to the 7630. So let me get this plugged in. It takes about 50 seconds to a minute for the access point to actually fire up. So we'll let that boot. Let me switch back to the original screen for a second. And in the GWN7630 software up here, you can see that there's only one device online. So once the 7615 boots up, then it takes the controller built into the 7630, about 50 seconds also to a minute to discover it. Now, I'm not going to keep you online that whole time. We'll cut the video and then we'll come back once the 7615 has been discovered. The 7630 controller will discover it automatically and then I'll show you the steps from there. Okay, we're back and if you look now at the screen, you can see in the 7630 controller over here we have two access points discovered, right? We have one that's online, actually one online and one that's discovered here. You can see it here. Let me flip real quick to the secondary view for a second. You're probably not going to see a difference on camera, but the 7630 here is already set up and it's got blue status lights here. The 7615 is ready to be set up and its status lights are purple. And again, I don't know. I apologize if you can't see that in the actual video. But let's go back into the controller now and we're going to come over to access points. We're going to come down to configuration. And here's the GWN 7630. We're going to come up in the upper right hand corner here and we're going to say discover AP. And in this window here it says GWN 7615, the IP address, the MAC address, etc., the firmware. We're going to come over to actions and we're going to click on the pairing link. And now if we come over here, we can see that the GWN7615 has been paired. It's in the provisioning process. And eventually, this status here should change to online. Now it's switched to offline. And again, uh, after another refresh or two, I just have to be patient. It should come back online. And there we go. You can see now we have a status of online for the 7615. So now the GWN 7630 is actually controlling both access points on this wireless network. So if you're finding any value in today's video, please smash that like button. It lets YouTube know you like what we're doing here on the channel. Now, Back to the video. So in that last clip, I showed you how simple it was to pair the 7615 as a slave to the 7630 master. Basically, boot it up, sign into the master, and let the master auto discover the secondary device. Click on auto discover in the controller, click the pairing link, and you're done. And you saw after a couple of refreshes, it went offline, but then it came back online. Now, I promised you that I was going to show you something that would save you a lot of frustration and time, and 
I wish I knew this before I attempted this process the very first time. I went about it a different way. I went about it what I thought was a logical way was when I booted up the 7615, or it could be any model access point, the one that I wanted to be the secondary, the slave, I went to that device's login page and it made sense. I put in the username like this. I put in the password. And then I came to the next text area, the drop down menu, and I clicked on that and I selected slave. To me, that made common sense and that's what I did. I went to sign in. I was presented with a very limited uh, UI and I entered the manager address, which would be the IP address in this case of the master, which is 192.168.50.1.1. And I saved the device. Thinking I was doing exactly what I should have been doing, I got an applied successfully message at the top. I flipped back to the 7630 master and I went to discover AP and there it was. So everything looks like it's going along well. However, before I click the pairing link, I just want to explain that I did this several times in my troubleshooting attempts just to figure out what was going on. And I got unpredictable um, responses both times. One time I would do it, the device would, after provisioning, it would go offline. And no matter how many times you refreshed it or quit the controller or restarted the device, the status in the master controller continually said offline. That was one result couple of times I did it the same way that I'm showing you now, which is really the way not to do it. After the pairing, hitting the pairing link, the, it got stuck in the provisioning process. So I'm not sure which result I'm going to get right now. However, I went online and I started to Google the, what was going on. And I came up with a couple of threads and forums that basically showed a couple of users, not a couple, quite a few users were experiencing the same issues. So I'm not the only one that went about this way to actually do the pairing. I didn't realize that all you had to do is let the master auto discover it and then do it from there. I figured there was a drop down on the login page to select master or slave. It made logical sense, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and let's pay, let's click the pairing link and see which result we get. Okay, so here we are. We're in the 7630 master. It went from provisioning to offline. And that's kind of what it did before in the first process. The difference now is it's not going to come back online. It's going to stay offline. So we're going to give it a second and then we're going to do a refresh and see what happens. And you can see one refresh and we're still offline. We'll wait a couple of seconds. We'll do another refresh. And we're still offline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to switch cameras. Here's the 7615. And again, you can't see the status lights probably, but in fact, they are both blue. And I do want to mention that even though it's showing the status offline in the master controller, the access point is operating and broadcasting Wi-Fi. And I tested that the other day by unplugging the master and I was still connected to the Wi-Fi and I still had internet access through the secondary slave. It just seems to be a little bit of a bug or a glitch in the controller, actually, or the process of the way things are being done, which is what I found out. So. This is the master controller. This is the slave. I'm going to unplug the slave to reboot it. You can see here's the cable here. We'll wait a few seconds. We'll go back in. We'll reboot it. Once it comes back up online, I'll go ahead and refresh the controller again. And even though it was rebooted, you'll see that the status still says offline. So I'll be right back once the device is online. 
Okay, the 7615 is back up online. If I switch over to the secondary view, again, I apologize, you probably can't see, but both devices are online with the status lights that are blue. So we're back up. Now we're gonna come back over to the controller and we'll do a refresh. And you can see even after a reboot, the secondary slave is still offline. So this is why I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you basically that just let the controller, the master controller, auto discover the slave. Don't sign into the slave and configure it manually and you should be good to go. So if you found any value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos that I have listed up above. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And as always, I want to thank you all for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.